The goal here is to show you how to solve more complicated trig equations by hand. Okay, so we're not going to use a calculator for these ones. Although they're going to seem really hard, I'm going to try to show you how to make them a little bit easier and certainly solvable. So we start off with this one right here. Where we've got 1 minus cos squared x plus sine x equals 2. And we're told that x is between 0 and 2 pi. All right. Now what? Well, if you're trained in the right way, look at this one right here. Well, let's say a girl, although that, I mean, it doesn't have to be a girl, right? But you're the only one in my life. Get it? Because sine squared theta, this is actually a good one to use. Well, I'll do it with x. Sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. That's the Pythagorean identity. Right? So this is important because we can use it here. See, here, instead of this 1 minus cos x, we can replace it because, look, 1 minus cos squared x, I meant to say, not just cos, yeah, cos squared x here. So 1 minus cos squared x, that equals sine x, or sine squared x, sorry, like this, because I can just get sine squared x by itself. Do so you notice I can make this replacement then? So this one right here is the same thing. So that means then that I can just say, ah, this is good, I can just say then that sine squared x, let's say plus sine x, and I'll move my 2 over, so I'll say minus 2 equals 0. Here's the issue. Now what? What am I supposed to do with something squared, something without squared, and then something by itself? And here's the neat part about it, is if you think of it in the right way, like watch, what if we, what if we factorize this? So instead of saying sine x, what if we said uh, sine x, let's just call it just regular x. I'm just going to do something off to the side here, okay? So it's not really part of the question, but it's going to be. Watch very carefully. If I made this just, I just call these x's instead of sine x's, then wouldn't it look like x squared? Because this is sine x you know, squared. So this is x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. Let's try to factorize this. Turns out, look, a equals 1, the first term here. b, this is a quadratic I'm factorizing, equals 1. And c equals minus 2. Because the reason is I'm trying to find the zeros for this. And a nice way to find zeros is to factorize something. We can use the zero factor theorem. So uh, let's take a look and see if we can do this. So I've got this idea here. I want my product, let's see, to be AC, which should be, in this case right here, 1 times negative 2. So it should be negative 2. I want the sum to be B. So that is 1. So are there two numbers that exist? that multiply to minus 2 that add up to 1. Well, let's write out all the numbers that multiply to minus 2. So 1 and minus 2, and there's also minus 1 and 2. Yay. Now, do any of these add up to 1? Yes, this one does. A little trick I like to do is always divide by a. Then I read bottom to top, so this makes it uh, 1 times x minus 1. So that'll be x minus 1. This one here becomes 1 times x plus 2. So x plus 2 equals 0. There. Now, why do I use this? Because I'm going to take that now and put it over here. Just magically say, ah, well, in, but remember, instead of making them x's, I'm going to make them sine x's. So watch very carefully now. This thing then becomes, so I'm going to use what I've done in purple here, to say, ah, this becomes sine x minus 1, and this here becomes sine x plus 2 equals 0. This is maybe an easier way to think about it. Wasn't that kind of elegant? I kind of like doing that. Uh, now, we have to think about the zero factor theorem. Either this thing has to be zero, or this thing has to be zero to make this work. So let's look at this one right here. Let's deal with that one right there. So I'm going to make sine x equal to 1, because that'll make this whole thing zero, right? Because 1 minus 1 will be zero. Great, sine x equals 1. Do I have a solution for that? Well, let's think about it. Uh, when is sine x equal to 1? Between 0 and 2 pi, remember. I can use the unit circle for that. If I do a unit circle, let's see here. So I'll do a little circle here, wee, like this. And remember, this is 1, this is 1, this is minus 1, this is minus 1. So where do I go around a circle? Where is sine equal to 1? Well, remember what sine means. If you're doing angles like this, sine is the y value. And where the y value is 1 is only straight up here. See, that's the only place where the y value is there. Now, what angle is that? Well, this is 0 radians. This over here is pi radians. This, therefore, must be half of that, so pi over 2. That's how I can say for sure, then, that x1, like the first solution, then, is just pi over 2. Is this between 0 and 2 pi? 
yes. So this is a solution. Now let's check the second solution because there's another one. Right? There's a whole other solution, isn't there? Uh, let me do it maybe in, I'll do it in blue. So we'll try to set this one right here equal to zero. So if I set that one equal to zero, I have to have the sine x equals minus two. When can sine x equal minus two? It doesn't. You can think of it this way. What if we looked at a graph of sine x just to try to prove it to you? Watch. Look, if we did a graph of sine x, remember sine x goes like this? Sine starts off at zero, goes like this. Right? And that's the a graph of regular sine x, right? It's like nothing fancy, it's just sine x. It's not like two sine x or sine of two x or anything. It's just sine x. It goes maximum of one and maximum of minus one. When can its height be minus two? It never gets there. Look, it never gets there. So this is actually not possible. So that's good to know. So that means there's only one solution. It's pi over two. Ta-da! We've done it. All right, let's do another one. Let's see how this one here looks. So I uh, like this. How's your trig class going? It's getting triggy. <laughs> this is, uh, okay, this is one of the hardest ones I could think of and find. Um, this is actually pretty tough looking because right away when you look at this, like what logs with sines, what the, and there's sines and cosines, like pff. the trick is for this one, don't panic. Okay, this is going to be a hard one. I mean, keep in mind, I sort of promised you that, right? The, the goal of this video was to show you how to do difficult questions by hand. Well, this is difficult. This is one of the harder ones I've seen at least. So let's take a look at this. Let's maybe take this minus log thing and move it to the left side. Maybe that's a good place to start. I'll just move the logs at least in the right place here. So log of sine x plus log base 2 of 2 cos x. Now you might already be starting to sort of sweat and worry when you do this question. Oh, you maybe should. But let's, let's take a look here what we do. So I just want to show you, if you can follow along this, and there's only two examples here, so after this we're going to be done. See, there's nothing else planned here. So follow along, see if you can understand this, but the goal, first of all, is move this over. Okay, well now what? Do you remember your rules of logs? You've got a rule of log that says um, log, now, I mean, it could be base 2, log base 2 of A plus log base 2 of B. Do you remember your rules of logs? If you have the same base, you can make it log base 2 of, remember what happens here? You do A times B. I'm going to use this idea to do this. So watch carefully then. I'm going to take my log base 2 and make it sine x times 2 cos x. So I'm going to make it 2 sine x cos x. All that equals minus 1. So far so good? I just used this trick. I just multiplied. So sine x times 2 cos x. I made it like this. Now do you remember your double angle formula? Okay, so this right here was just rules for logs, right? Now let's use this as a double angle formula here now that I'm going to use. Do you recognize what happens with 2 sine x cos x? That is what um, yeah, this is actually a double angle formula. So let me maybe just uh, write it down for you here. This is sine of 2x equals 2 sine x cos x. So this is your double angle formula. And this is good news because now I can replace this. So instead of saying log base 2 of all this stuff, I can then say, ah, then this is log base 2 of sine 2x. Okay, that equals minus 1. So far, so good? Now I'm going to use this idea about what we do with logs. Remember how, how we can write things in terms of logs and exponents? We can say this thing to the power of this thing equals this thing. Maybe I'll do it a little drawing here. So this thing to the power of this thing equals this thing. So watch carefully. 2 to the power of negative 1 equals sine of 2x. That's another rule of logs, right? That you can write a log as an exponential. Well, what does 2 to the minus 1 mean? That's just uh, 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 equals sine of 2x. This is basically what I'm going to be trying to solve for here. So, phew, so far fairly difficult. Yeah, sure, it is. So this is so far where I'm at. I'm trying to solve this. I'm trying to say, when is the sine of 2x equal to 1 half? What can I do? I don't like this 2x business. So what I'm going to do is off to the side, 
Okay, I'm going to do something else just like I did before and did something sort of off to the side here to help me out. I'm going to do something else off to the side. Okay, and let's see what happens. I'm going to say, let's call 2x because I don't really like that. Let's just call that a just to deal with it, just to make it easier. So that basically I'm going to try to say then that um, I'm just going to try to do this for a. So I'm going to say, when is 1 half? Uh, it will. Actually, I'll do it the other way around. I'll say, when is sine of a? When is sine of a? equal to one half. Like when is sine equal to something positive? So we can think about our uh, quadrants and think about where, where can I have a positive sine? If you remember your cast rule, so all students take calculus, this tells me like where is sine positive? Well sine is positive only up here where they're all positive or up here where sine is positive. It can't be down here, it can't be down here, at least not for a. Not for this little letter A here. All right, so I've got this solution and this solution possible. Okay, when can it be one half? Maybe that's a little bit harder. Uh, maybe use special triangles might be a way to do it. So let's take a look at this. You could also use your hand rule. This is this hand, hand trick that I taught you before. Whatever works, right? One, two, root, three. Basically the question is, when is sine of something equal to one half? Remember what sine means. Sine means opposite over hypotenuse. So if I guessed it was 60 degrees, let's just guess that. Let's guess that my reference angle, let's say, is 60 degrees. If it was 60 degrees, sine of it would be root 3 over 2. Is that this? Nope. So it can't be 60 degrees. Therefore, maybe I should guess that my reference angle is 30 degrees. Let's see if that works. Sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse. It's 1 over 2. Hey, that works. So that's how I know for sure my reference angle is 30 degrees. Well, a reference angle of 30 degrees is how many radians? Let's think about it in radians. 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. So that's my reference angle. So that means then I know my drawing here. If I was to redo my drawing, now I know that I've got this angle right here, which is pi over 6, because that's possible. And I've also got this angle over here, which is also pi over 6. Now I have to name these angles properly, so to speak. So let's take a look here. This one right here is easy. It's just pi over 6, because right? so angles always start from 0 here. So I know that my first answer, x1, my first one, actually I shouldn't say x1. I should say a1, I guess. My first answer for a, a1, is pi over 6. That's my first one. That's this one. My second one, however, is how do I do this angle right here? How do I do that one? Well, that one is going to be, uh, remember, all the way over here is pi. And this is pi over 6. So I want to do pi minus. If you notice this right here? If I took pi and I subtracted from it pi over 6, that would get me this angle right here. That's what I needed. So I'm going to say pi minus pi over 6. And, okay, I need a common denominator, so I'm going to make it 6 pi over 6. You get my meaning here, 6 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6. What does that give me? It gives me 5 pi over 6. So what can I conclude from this? I can conclude from this, maybe I'll make it a little bit easier, that a1 is pi over 6, and a2 is 5 pi over 6. Phew. So what am I going to do with this? I'm going to use this to help me. Because watch, I'm going to, I did this off to the side, right? Now why was this helpful though? Because I'm going to take this thing, I'm going to take this thing, and I'm going to make them now proper. I'm going to make them real things, because they weren't A's, it was 2X. So remember though, because I said that 2X was equal to A, therefore X must be equal to A over 2. Does that make sense? I'm just going to, as I'm trying to use what I just did here, this little trick, to help me to figure out what to do with my X's, because there was no A's in the question. So I'm almost done. I just got to convert these basically and say, hey, I'm going to take this right here and apply this to both of these. So therefore, my first answer then, let's do it for x1 here. So x1 is going to be, well, a1 over 2. Well, what was a1? a1 was pi over 6. So I got to do pi over 6 divided by 2. Well, that's just going to be pi over 12 because it's 6 times 2 here. Okay, so therefore I can conclude that x1 equals pi over 12. My second answer, let's see here, x2 is going to be a2 over 2, which is going to be 5 pi over 6 divided by 2, which is 
5 pi over 12. So therefore, my x2 is going to be 5 pi over 12. And believe it or not, I'm done. Because if you look at this, are both of these between 0 and pi over 2? Well, they are. Pi over 12 is very, very, very small. Remember, it's half of pi over 6. So that's only like 15 degrees. Um, which should make sense because we were doing doubles here. Right? So if I found it was 30, well, that was supposed to be double it. So that's why it's actually half. Um, maybe that didn't make sense, but I promise you, <laughs> I think this works. Uh, this one right here, then, is going to be 5 pi over 12. Is that less than pi over 2? Yes. Because if it was 6 pi over 12, that would reduce to pi over 2. This is less than 6 pi over 12. This is one less, in fact. It's 1 pi over 12 less than that. So both of these actually work. There's my final solution. Phew! So these were indeed tricky. But hopefully you can see we can solve some neat stuff, even really hard ones, like those logs. And this one right here where we actually did factorizing here.